The latching relay is a common control requirement. Traditionally in ladder logic we would make a latching relay using a regular relay coil and one of its own contacts so that when the start button is pressed the relay turns on and holds itself on after the start button is released. Pressing the stop button interrupts the supply to the run relay which opens this contact, unlatches and the circuit is reset. It's very simple and widely used but code can turn into spaghetti fairly quickly. The logo latching relay is a set reset type and works very simply, very little to set up other than give it a name and decide whether you want it retentive or not. We'll set retentivity on which means that during a power cycle it will remember its status on power up. Run the simulation. We'll give the set input a pulse, the latching relay turns on, give the reset a pulse, the latching relay turns off. We'll turn it on again and we'll interrupt the power. Everything goes black, release the power reset and it has remembered its state because we've remnants or retentivity set on. With the simulation for the two inputs set as switches, we can now leave the set input on Turn on the reset input. Note that the reset overrides the set. If we release the reset, because the set is still on, the output of the latching relay turns high and normal operation resumes. Very useful. Before we look at the pulse relay, we'll do a recap on the latching relay which is, has the RS symbol. It's very simple. You can give it a block name and you can set its retentivity so it powers up in the same state it powered down. Run the simulation. If we toggle the set input, the output turns on. If we toggle the set input off, the output remains on. Press the reset input, the output turns off. Release the reset input, the output remains off. And as the name suggests, RS, the reset takes priority over the set input. So with both on, the output is off. The pulse relay is like the latching relay on steroids. So we can do the same functions as we had before with this, the S and R. But we note in the configuration that as well as giving a block name, we can give the reset priority over the set or we can give the set priority over the reset as well as the normal retentivity thing. So we'll leave it as an RS at the moment. Uh, just confirm that operation is the same. Set, output turns on, reset, output turns off. The pulse relay symbol indicates that there's a bit more to it. The trigger input, when it goes high, will turn the output on and it will remain on when the trigger goes low and the next transition of the trigger from low to high will cause the output to turn low. So it's acting as a toggle and this has many uses. We'll wire up. We'll power up the simulator, turn the trigger on, the function block turns on, turn the input off, the function block remains on. We're at this point here in the cycle. Turn it on again, output turns off, and turn off the trigger again, output remains off. So it alternates on every rising edge of the trigger input. We can combine that with the RS functions here. So if we turn to a set, it maintains the output regardless of what's happening on the trigger. If we do a reset, it remains in reset mode regardless of what happens to the trigger. Of course, with set and reset, the reset is winning in this case. 
we can invert that so that the set priority takes precedence and now we can see with set and reset both enabled the output is set toggle again and the trigger input works as normal